Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Um, dear participants and honorable guests and colleagues, uh, I welcome you all to the webinar on post-exposure prophylaxis in leprosy, organized as a joint initiative by the Global Partnership for Zero Leprosy, the WHO Global Leprosy Program, international partners NLR and GLRA, and partners from Indonesia, Tanzania, and Morocco. My name is Dr. Christine Fenenga, and I am the director of country programs with the Global Partnership and will be moderating this webinar. We are very excited to launch this first of a series of webinars on PEP, single dose rifampicin for post-exposure prophylaxis for contacts of leprosy diagnosed patients is an important measure to reduce the burden of leprosy and is part of the WHO Leprosy Strategic Plan 2016-2020. Over the past years, SDR-PEP has been piloted and successfully in, uh, at, right, in, in several countries with support of Novartis and many other partners. Over the past years, various countries have embraced this policy now. This webinar is specifically for countries that want to start introducing SDR for PEP in their national leprosy program. You can have the next slide, please. The purpose of this webinar is to present and discuss the key factors in the stages of preparation setup, implementation, monitoring and evaluation of single-dose rifampicin for post-exposure prophylaxis. Now, this webinar will be recorded such that other colleagues who are not able to attend today can access the presentation on the Global Partnership uh, website. And maybe you also want to go through it again at a later moment. We will simultaneously have a French translation for the French-speaking countries. Now, I don't want to talk too long because we have a, a full program today with five experts from all around the world presenting. Next slide, please. The first presentation will be on the history of the development of PEP SDR, and that will be given by Dr. Erwin Korman from the WHO Global Leprosy Program. The second presentation is on the PEP approaches, the different approaches which have been tried in all the different pilots, and this will be presented by Dr. Krista Kassang from the German Leprosy and Relief Association. Then we will have three interesting country cases. And we are extremely happy that we have been able to engage the following speakers from the ministries of health, who we know uh, have a very uh, busy schedule. Uh, the Indonesia case will be presented by Dr. Waburuntu. He is the director of DCPPC in Indonesia. Then the second case will be uh, of Tanzania, presented by Dr. Kamara. He is the head of the National Leprosy and TB program in Tanzania. And the third will be presented by uh, Dr. Saidi uh, from Morocco. And she is presenting um, the situation also, uh, what they have been doing on PEP in Morocco. The last point uh, of the agenda will be questions and answers. So we please ask everybody to note down any question of the presentations. So you can also ask these at the end of the presentation. Now, if there is a situation that you don't understand what is uh, presented, then you can ask for clarification. And then you can just raise your hand also in the system. Um, I'd like also to mention that uh, these speakers have been supported in the preparation of the webinar. And in the next slide, you will also see uh, that there are quite a lot of people uh, included there. Can we have the next slide, uh, slide please? Yes, so we see quite a lot of uh, names. I will not mention them all, uh, but you, will can, you can read them later on also in the presentation. Now, before we go to the speakers, um, I'd like to ask my colleague, uh, Mrs. Andy Tucker, to give you some instructions how uh, this webinar will work. Thank you, Christine. I just have a few technical things to go over with you. Um, so we all know how this uh, webinar will run. Uh, so if at any time 
during the course of the webinar, you have a problem, um, a technical difficulty, then feel free to send myself or send Christine a message using the chat. You can send a message directly to us and we'll uh, help you um, remedy whatever the problem is. Um, as Christine mentioned, we do have simultaneous French translation happening during this webinar. So if you'd like to hear the webinar in French, then you'll go to uh, the interpretation bubble, which should be in the lower right hand corner of your screen um, that will scroll up and you can select French. Um, if you don't want to hear the webinar in French, if you'd like to hear it in the um, presentation language, which is English, um, you don't need to turn on the interpretation function. But if you would like to hear it in French, you can select that language now. And finally, at the conclusion of this webinar, um, we'll have a question and answer session. Uh, so during this time, um, I will unmute uh, all the participants in the webinar um, and you will select the uh, raise hand button um, and then Christine will call on you um, when it's your turn to pose your question. Thank you. Thank you very much, Andy. Um, then I would like to go further with the first presenter, and that will be Dr. Urban Corman telling something about the history uh, of the development of BEP SDR. Dr. Corman. Thank you, Christine, and colleagues from across the world. Good afternoon for me, but maybe good morning for you. I hope you can hear me. I'm going to give you a brief introduction on uh, how did chemoprophylaxis actually start. Uh, how do I move to the next slide? Okay. Next slide. So we know all that leprosy is an old disease known to mankind, maybe the oldest disease. So I can quickly go over this and go to the next slide. Um, and before there was treatment or before there was a vaccine that is not the only way of, tree of managing leprosy was isolation. Isolation of the individual, of the family, of the community, sending the person away and also sterilization and there were also travel bans. Actually it sounds quite familiar with the COVID-19 situation today which is based on the same principles. There is no treatment, there is no prevention for COVID-19, so what can we do? isolation. We have another word we call quarantine and we call it social distancing and there are also travel bans in place but the principles are the same as what for leprosy before there was any treatment available. Next slide. So the early treatment, I can jump over the middle ages because we can't call it even treatment. It was more of the traditional methods was probably doing away with leprosy, but also doing away with the leprosy patient completely. But in the 19th century, there was from the traditional medicine used in particular in Asia, there was known effects, positive effects of chomogra, an oil that was used and that had some effect for a uh, positive effect to, uh, to treat leprosy. And I think I, I would like to bring some credit to the lady pictured uh, in this slide, which is Alice Ball, because she had actually refined that method. She never got the credit, and we talk now about Black Lives Matter, and the reason why she did not get the credit for her, uh, for her refining of, of methods at that time was exactly her race. It, do, it was only recently that she was rehabilitated because the credit was all taken by her supervisors at that time, but till the 40s, the ball method was actually the use for managing leprosy. Next slide. So then we come to the so-called modern times and they start, okay, when we, when the bacillus, when the cause of leprosy was discovered, it was established in 1873 by Dr. Hansen and therefore we call it also Hansen disease, that leprosy was caused by a bacillus called Mycobacterium leprae. And if you see 1873 and then the first treatment with antibiotics was 1940. So there was still a gap of 50 years between the discovery of the cause of leprosy and actually then the first treatment. And sulfones, promine and dapsone could, man could treat leprosy. Um, it was, dapsone was used as, as, as monotherapy for many, many years, but that led also to the basis of starting control programs. So for the first time in history, it was thought that 
by introducing modern treatment or antibiotic treatment, leprosy could come under control and do away with isolation, etc. Unfortunately, as with all antibiotics, what happens is if a single antibiotic is used, it sooner or later leads to resistance, and resistance was already quickly recognized. Only 10 years after introducing Dapsone, resistance was recognized, and by the 70s, 50% uh, of the cases actually led to, uh, uh, led to treatment failure. So that was basically the end of leprosy control program with such high failure rates. So fortunately, in, in the 80s, MDT was then recognized or discovered as as a way to mitigate the or to prevent the development of resistance. And MDT allowed also to short the treatment from lifelong to time limited period. So we could declare a patient cured. Next slide. So this led them to reinforcing, reinvigorating leprosy control programs around the world. And when MDT was initiated in the 80s, uh, there was about more than 5 million patients on treatment. With MDT, this was brought down to, to less than, than 500,000. So there was a 95% reduction of what we call the prevalence de defined as a number of patients on treatment with MDT, thanks to the MDT. So that was the major, MDT was a game changer to reduce the burden of people on treatment, that the burden that was put on health centers to take care of leprosy patients. Next slide. Well, there are some limitations. We, MDT has got some impact on the reduction of cases on treatment, less impact on new cases. And the previous slide actually stopped as in the year 2000, but if we would extend it to 2020, you would see there was hardly any, uh, the, the, the further reduction was only very limited after that. So we now realize that MDT alone will not do it if we talk about elimination or getting rid, getting rid of leprosy completely. So we need new tools for interrupting transmission. And some of the new tools are chemoprophylaxis and also immunoprophylaxis, which means vaccines, which is all under development and no tangible results with, re with regard to vaccines are there at the moment. Next. Chemoprophylaxis. Well, I have to admit out of ignorance, I thought this was something new but apparently it starts already in the 60s that Dapsone was used to given to healthy school children as a way of preventing leprosy. And also in the 70s, studies were undertaken in India and more in the general population or in specific subcategories of population, but it showed a significant reduction in new leprosy cases. There were other uh, chemoprophylactic agents used, acidapsone, again with 50% reduction and in the 90, in the uh, second half of the 80s in French Polynesia, single dose rifampicin was used. The 10 years follow up showed also a significant, uh, significant reduction. Next slide. In the 90s, we had ROM. ROM stands for rifampicin ofloxacin mon monocycline. This was given to adult population and rifampicin to children in the Pacific Islands to the Entire population. Entire population, of course, is never 100%. So the coverage was around 70%. This was done, given twice, and it led also to a significant reduction. But then it stopped, and it was no longer. Uh, it was not repeated, and so on. <clears throat> after some years, the number of new cases continued then to increase again after the initial reduction. In 2000, a study was undertaken in Indonesia with, with rifampicin uh, in two doses, given twice, and there were three different approaches used, a blanket approach, then contacts, and then a control group where no uh, intervention was used, and that served as the, uh, the baseline. And then we compared the results, and in the blanket approach, there was a three times lower uh, incidence of leprosy compared to the control group. The most convincing actually was the study undertaken in Bangladesh, the COLAB study, which showed a 57% reduction in new cases. And I like to show the, the graph on the right side of this, of this uh, slide. You can see um, the, after two years, the number, so the red line is the people who received the SDR. The blue line is the control group who did not receive the SDR. So there was a, sharp a much sharper decline in leprosy 
in the in the group that received SDR compared to the control group where leprosy also went down probably because of, of other factors, so RNMDT, etc. But it is a difference that really means the number of cases that could be prevented. That was about uh, is determined as 57 percent. What is also important to know is that after some time, people say, okay, the effect is waning. Well, the effect is not waning. There is no rebound effect. So it's not that leprosy was increasing after the, uh, the study was over. So it has a lasting effect. And that, that was most convincing. And that was, uh, was also the reason why this was taken up uh, as a recommendation for the bridge show. Next slide. So the... Oh, there are more, yeah, more studies done. So we had, uh, uh, I think, yeah. So this, the previous slides was all dealing with uh, efficacy on, on what is the value of SDR in the study context. Now we go to the feasibility. What is the effectiveness of SDR in routine situations? Is it feasible? Is it not feasible? Will there be effect outside uh, the, the protected environment of, of the study? of a well-controlled area and when we apply it in, in a regular situation. So there were studies again undertaken in Bangladesh in the same area where the, where the uh, efficacy study was undertaken. And it showed that it, among household contacts that it was very effective, that it was socially acceptable. Um, and for other categories of contacts that it was also feasible, particularly if it's used as a blanket approach. Same conclusion was made in Indonesia. It is undertaken as a blanket approach in the island of Silaru, which is a small island with a high burden of, of, of leprosy. It is certainly feasible. And the largest study, multi-country study, uh, on feasibility of, of SDR was undertaken. It's called the LPEP study, uh, undertaken in the, in the countries mentioned on the slide, which had a, a high coverage. Uh, of, of the contacts of all the index cases. The conclusion was that it is very much feasible as a routine program component, on the, but it builds on contact tracing. So programs that have contact tracing in place, it's a little add-on to add on also uh, SDR. If no contact tracing in place, well then of course a lot of efforts have to be done to build capacity and undertake contact tracing. It is well accepted by index patients, by contacts, and by the health workforce, especially when the proper counseling and, uh, is done and information is provided. And we also have seen that it, is, uh, it, it was a major reinvigoration, not only of this component of leprosy control, but also of other components, because something new was added to the program. It made people enthusiastic, it created, again, some interest in leprosy, and that has helped to, to strengthen the overall leprosy uh, program much beyond the component of SDR only. Next slide. So in 2018, we have come up with guidelines for the diagnosis, treatment and prevention of leprosy. So as part of prevention, the guidelines say that SDR may be used as preventive treatment for contacts of leprosy patients after excluding leprosy and tuberculosis disease because then they need a full treatment, not a single dose treatment. And there are some other contraindications mentioned in detail in the guidelines. Of course, it builds on, as I mentioned earlier, on contact management. And we need to, to the consent of the index case to disclose his or her disease. So that requires a bit of counseling. But if after the counseling, and so the index case refused to disclose her status, okay, then we have to respect the choice and then we will not insist further. Next slide. Where are we now? We are in the process of developing some technical guides on the, the guide, the, the recommendation is there, but on how to implement this. So this will be brought out as a joint document by WHO and GPZL. It will cover two key components. One is the contact tracing, one is chemoprophylaxis, because there is a lot of overlap between the two. It will be a practical guide on, on the how, what is required to implement these components. And the, what it will include is on the consent taking in order to maximize the coverage of contact tracing as well as SDR. How do we do contact tracing? How do we do the screening? Also about the drug management because we need to obtain the drugs for, for uh, prophylaxis. Monitoring the side effects, recording and reporting and other things required to make it a programmatic component. 
Next slide. So the entity roadmap for 2021 and uh, 2030 also includes, well, what constitutes the leprosy burden. Till now, it was narrowly defined as patients in need of treatment. We can also add persons who have disabilities, but then when we talk about pre, uh, chemoprophylaxis, then we talk about healthy populations. In most situations, we are not going to target entire country populations. That is not feasible, that is not cost effective. So we will determine populations at risk or, or at higher risk who could most benefit or where we could have most impact by giving uh, preventive chemotherapy. And um, so that is some, uh, basically the, the contacts, the family contacts, maybe the social contacts and in certain situations also blanket approach. BCG is the only vaccine which is currently recommended to be given as a, profil, as a preventive measure as part of the EPI program. Next slide. So this is uh, some projections. So the blue line is the reported case detection, so till 2017. And if we do the business as usual, we would have a further reduction. And by 2030, we could think about 25%, 30% reduction of leprosy. Our aim is to go to, to for a 70% reduction, which is the orange line by 2030. And in order to do that, we cannot do business as usual. We will need new interventions and chemoprophylaxis will be one of them. Next slide. And we are also developing the post-2020 global leprosy strategy. It's still under development. It will be in line with the NTD roadmap because leprosy is identified as one of the NTDs, but it will be a standalone document. It will have, as the current roadmap, strategic pillars, and one of them will be the preventive chemotherapy. So it will be elevated to a full pillar. The decision was taken on the advice of our technical advisory group also because that is something new we can offer to programs which has not been done on a routine basis and therefore if you want to have it taken off in countries on a large scale it needs to be really shown as very important therefore it is given uh, it is elevated to a full-fledged pillar next slide okay that's all thank you very much Thank you very much, Dr. Corman, uh, for this very uh, clear presentation on the history. I'm sure that uh, several of the participants will have um, questions about this, maybe. Uh, so please note them down so we can also discuss these at the end of all the presentations. So can I then now ask uh, Dr. Krista Kassang uh, to give the, the next presentation on the PEP approaches? Yeah, <clears throat> thank you very much. Welcome, everybody. I'm very happy to show you some more practical aspects in the next 10 slides. We have heard from Dr. Coleman already that there is a new tool, post-exposure prophylaxis SDR, which is very promising to help us to reduce the new cases. But how can we roll out them practically? It is always a problem how really to start with field work. And I would like to start with you with a set of slides which are focused on index patient approaches. Next slide, please. So when you find the index case in your country, the index case is a patient which is just confirmed to have leprosy. With all contact tracing activities, of course, first of all, we ask the patient if he gives the permission to screen the contacts. And in our standard post-exposure SDR approach, we do the same. We ask the patient, we get the consent, and then we write down the name of the contacts and go directly to the villages or the house where the patient lives. So it's a household contact screening which should follow, of course, also only when the households consent that they want to be screened. Whom do we screen? We screen everybody. 
also the babies and the small children. And who is screening? This depends on the country approaches. Sometimes you have voluntary healthcare workers, special trained people, or even doctors who are available to go in houses and screen the direct contacts. In our standard approach, we have a definition of household, which is people living under the same roof or using the same kitchen. And then normally we reach between five to seven contacts. After screening, of course, we will refer the ones who are suspected to have leprosy. And for the others, we um, check for the inclusion criteria or eligibility criteria for chemoprophylaxis. So for the inclusion criteria, we have that it's a person who is above two years old or above 10 cages, who has no sign and symptoms of leprosy or of tuberculosis. We ask the WHO questions for tuberculosis screening. We also roll out a pregnancy by asking the contact, but rifampicin is known not really to harm pregnant women. And of course, we rule out liver or other severe renal diseases. And the others who really qualify will get the chemoprophylaxis which is 600 milligrams for adults, 450 for adolescents, 300 for children, and then below five years, depending on the cages. So this is the standard approach. With this, we reach up between five to seven contexts. Next slide. Post-exposure prophylaxis is even more effective when we widen the group who will be protected. So in many different approaches, we tried the neighbor contacts approach. And with these neighbor contacts, we normally used to check in the five closest houses to the index case. With this, in the mean, we reached between 20 and 30 contexts. There is an extended neighbor approach also asking for the next 10 houses, which was also tested in the LPEP study. Next slide. These two, the two uh, first approaches were pending on the direct neighbors by looking at the houses. What we also do sometimes is we have a geographically definition the geographically definition shows us that there is a circle of 100 meter around the house where the people are at highest risk. So with that approach, we can really draw some circles around the house of the index, 100 meters, and include all the people in this geographically defined area. Next slide. Another definition of contacts is also the social contact definition. The social contact means the number of hours a person has spent with the index case. So when it's above 20 hours a week with the index case, it would be good to screen the social contacts. But this approach is a little bit tricky because this is not only focused on a geographical area. Sometimes you have school places or workplaces and you have to go somewhere else, not where the index case is living. So you really need to discuss in your country if this approach is feasible. And also you have to take in account not to raise stigma by discussing the issue in schools and workplaces. Next slide. Uh, one approach which is not so effective as the household contact tracing approach is the health center based contact tracing. 
That means that when a patient is coming to your health center, you ask him also to bring his or her contacts to the hospital. From our experience, only few people, few contacts really showed up, but this approach has a big advantage. It is very cheap, cheap. You don't need additional healthcare worker and you can at least start immediately without a lot of preparations. All these approaches which I showed you now were approaches which were focused on the index case and his contacts. But we have three further approaches which are more anonymous, where we don't need to disclose a status of a patient and of course where the stigma issue is not as big as in the other approaches. Next slide please. One of this approach is the blanket approach. The blanket approach means that you define before your activity a risk area in your country. Risk area definition is normally done by cases occurring the last five years and doing some mapping exercise to identify the hotspots. With these mapping exercise, you get the number of people at risk and then it can be followed by chemoprophylaxis giving to all these people at risk. Later on, we will hear a example from Indonesia for this approach. Next slide. A special blanket approach is the urban blanket approach. In urban areas, normally the people don't know each other very well and risk assessment is very difficult. But this is also very effective when you do urban approaches to include the neighbors in the houses and especially when they use, for example, same places to sit or kitchens. The last approach, next slide. I would like to bring you in mind is the skin camp blanket approach. A skin camp has a huge advantage because when you ask people to come for a skin camp, you are not, you don't need to mention the word leprosy, which of course in stigma situation is very helpful. You ask people to come in risk areas for a skin camp and screen and then you can provide chemoprophylaxis to these who are not at risk to have leprosy. Next slide. In the LPEP study, we tested different approaches in different countries. And I have put you together some measures and definitions from the different countries. When we see the numbers of con index patients, contacts per index patient we reached, we find um, that in Indonesia and in India, we had the highest numbers. And this was because the contact definition was much broader with extended house and uh, household visit approaches. Sri Lanka, for example, you see that we reached only two patients, two contacts per patient. This showed us that the health center approach, which was used there mostly, was not very effective, but of course it was somehow cheap. SDR administration was very high in all of the countries and their acceptance rate was always above 70 and mostly above 80%. In the lines below, you can have a check later on who we designed to be responsible for contact tracing, for contact screening, for diagnosis or for SDA administration in the different settings. 
Next slide. The GPZL has um, already put together a toolkit to define the post-exposure people at risk, which you can find on the uh, GPZL website. And we are working in the moment on a matrix for to which is the best for my epidemiological or my stigma setting. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Krista, for uh, giving this wonderful presentation. And thank you also, uh, Lisbeth Miras, who has been working together with, uh, with Krista on this uh, presentation. I think uh, it gives you a good taste of what the possibilities are. And, and of course, I mean, each of the contexts will require uh, to ask a lot of questions and to also determine what kind of um, approach is the best. So it is really very nice if we now can also listen to the um, presentations from Indonesia, Tanzania and Morocco, uh, who can tell a little bit more about how they have been working uh, in their country on uh, PEP and how they made the decisions on which approaches they, uh, they wanted to, to, uh, to, uh, to use there. So can I please invite now Dr. Vindra Babuaruntu to uh, present something about Indonesia. Thank you. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. It's a pleasure to be a part of this uh, lovely meeting. The first, uh, let me introduce myself. I am Dr. Vindra Babuaruntu, Director of Communicable Disease Prevention and Control, Indonesia, Ministry of Health. Uh, you may call me Buindra. Uh, this afternoon, I'm going uh, to talk about uh, SDR PEP blanket approach uh, Indonesia experience. Next slide. Next. The, I, I would like to present the presentation following this uh, my outline. Next slide. This slide uh, show the leprosy situation in Indonesia. Uh, 2019. Uh, the number of new cases uh, reads uh, 70,000 for with uh, 19,907 uh, uh, registered case. Uh, child proportion among new case it is 11,64% uh, and disability rate reads uh, 4 Point eighteen per 1 million population. This slide also saw trend of case detection rate and prevalence rate uh, leprosy since uh, 2011 to 2019. Next slide. This is uh, elimination of leprosy can be achieved not only with the use of MDP. Oh, oh. Yes, uh, effort need to be made as an innovation and to reduce incident of leprosy. Uh, by reducing uh, leprosy transmission, leprosy post exposure prophylaxis is considered as the way to decrease uh, the incident of leprosy. Uh, the several reasons can be explained in the in this context. Uh, one, the transmission of this disease still going on. Search, there is no vaccine available. There is no uh, three, uh, there is no adequate tool, tool for early diagnosis. There is transmission before uh, clinical signs appear. Many remote area with highly leprosy and density. Next slide. Uh, the methods, there are two methods of SCR. Uh, approach. Uh, first, contact approach. This method uh, trends uh, to uh, standard as routine contact uh, tracing. We are also doing self family screening with the participation of health care at all community. The second, blended approach, PEP SDR team do home to home visit or outreach. Whereas uh, ECR PET 
pods when the village invited to the pods. Next slide. The criteria of contact approach and blanket approach are as a follow for contact approach when the index case live in scatter. It's also covered for a wide or area and it has and easily accessed by uh, for frequently visit. Uh, meanwhile, in blanket approach, index case live in cluster. It only specific uh, specificity for small area uh, such as sub village to village. Usually, the area has difficult access. Next slide. It is uh, in this uh, opportunity I would like to show you about uh, pilot SDR map in Lingat uh, village. Please see this map. Lingat is uh, loca located in Selaru Islands, the southeastern uh, part of Indonesia, uh, bordering with uh, Australia. It takes four, uh, three, four, four hours by speedboat from the capital city of the district to get there uh, during uh, calm season on October, December. Total population 2014 is 20,065. Then uh, demand income to steward and uh, fishermen and palm wine. Uh, pet blanket approach was conducted in Lingat Village in November 2014 and November 2015 uh, for the rest population. Next slide. This is the first time we conduct a pet blanket approach at the time we selected the, this village because we suspected the village is high endemicity uh, leprosy. Uh, leprosy program was not implemented well. That is uh, why there is no leprosy data at the time. Uh, the village is uh, small, is isolated, and inhabitation live in faster. You can see in this slide the map is the of the village. Next slide. Uh, this is the of, of various stakeholder in involved and in their uh, role, sub directorate direct transmitted uh, tropical disease, the DC department, heat and waste Maluku, Lingat uh, had uh, capacity, head of Lingat and school teacher, and then uh, village of healthcare and community. And next slide. This uh, this slide so that there were uh, 14, 65, 68 people received SDR among 17, uh, 71 register population. Uh, all the coverage is uh, 83%. There are five non-eligible groups in this, this pilot are uh, pregnant uh, for, uh, for 18 people, leprosy suspect uh, 2022 people, TB suspect 19 people, child under two year old uh, 62 people, and 11 people in the competition medication. Right. Uh, this is uh, after SDRP in Lingat Village. There is a decreased number of new cases since 20, 2016 to 2019. The new cases become less compared for two before uh, SDRP undertaken. This indicated that the pet blanket approach has successfully prevent leprosy among contact cases. 
The result of this pilot has been published in BMC Infection International Journal in 2018. Next slide. Yeah, yes. Next. The, this is the policy Indonesian government has issued to regulation uh, is a legal basis as uh, the strategy namely Indonesia Indonesian number uh, 11 in 2019. It contains uh, activity leprosy program including uh, chemoprophylaxis. The regulation also explain the rule of and task uh, related to chemoprophylaxis from uh, Ministry of Health up to Health Center. Furthermore, there is a national clinical guideline which uh, containing uh, management of leprosy and standard standardized national case management of leprosy. Uh, next slide. This is a learning from the experience of SDR SPEP pilot in Lingat and the uh, umbrella of the ministerial regulation on no, in number uh, 11 in 2019. We conduct SDR uh, PET blanket approach in 14 villages from district among uh, 10,046. Uh, nine population and uh, 47.3 percent were given an SDR PEP and 100 146 or 1.3 percent were a new leprosy case Next slide. In Indonesia, we conduct a SDR PEG blanket approach following the series of uh, activity. Next slide. This is uh, in order to strengthen the capacity of SDR PEG team. We develop a video to support uh, during the training of for the SDR PEG team so the participant can visualize and discuss the SDR PIP blanket activity. Next slide. This is a lesson learned from SDR PIP in implementation uh, at the Foro North Sulawesi. The one in involved uh, village community leaders and early state to increase sense of belonging of this program and coverage. To assign the host by, by number especially useful to for uh, coordination and follow-up. Uh, next slide. Uh, three, uh, a small carefully assembly and train, train uh, team is better than a big team. Uh, for the use of health education, material is important for to support this intervention. And Finally, local staff should be uh, empowered for following up to the rest of the population who are not uh, present during a uh, PEP activity. Next slide, Ch the challenge uh, that we face are one, uh, pandemic COVID-19 situation is the adjustment to new normal during COVID-19 pandemic, uh, protocol COVID-19 uh, leprosy program and the maintaining of the commitment. Uh, two regiment of prevampicin for child under five years. Uh, untrained, untrained healthcare provider uh, need afford to improve awareness to the to get a uh, before change not only for community but also for health staff and finally follow up uh, after implementation next slide this is a uh, conclude my presentation by summarizing the following uh, points. 
it is uh, feasible to conduct SDR PEP blanket and approach in high endemic uh, remote area. Additionally, to have a good uh, SDR PEP, we have to uh, be good uh, commitment from decision make and leprosy team, uh, human resource and budget, and to do it is the sure uh, attention. Uh, B because uh, in quality of uh, recording and reporting, including documentation, community health education, screening, diagnosis, adequate uh, quantify of prevent testing. Uh, because uh, coverage of SDR in target population or, or target contact and sustainable of this uh, program. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for your presentation, uh, Dr. Vavorundu. Uh, it was a, a, a very good presentation on the uh, blanket approach and um, I think it's, it's also an excellent um, example for other countries to, to hear how you have approached this and what kind of results you, uh, you found and also the challenges. So I hope also that uh, we will get some questions also from the audience uh, later on. So um, let's go back, to, uh, let's go to the next presentation from Tanzania, yeah. uh, which is also a joint presentation uh, uh, which will be presented by Dr. Kamara from the Ministry of Health. But as you can see from the, the first slide, it's really a, a, a joint presentation also from the NGO sector and, and the Ministry of Health. So please go ahead, uh, Dr. Kamara. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, good afternoon, uh, good evening and good morning. Um, it's a great pleasure to take this uh, to, 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 to participate in this important uh, meeting. Um, we go to the next slide, please. Uh, that is Tanzania, uh, surrounded by eight countries uh, with a population of around 58 million. Uh, next one. Next slide, next. As per the reprocess situation in this country, we, we still report over a thousand cases per year. And the last year it was around the, uh, 1,585 uh, prevalence uh, of 0.3 per 10,000. Uh, but uh, for the past 20 years, we still experience around 10, a proportion of 10% uh, graded to disability, and uh, since uh, we, we we intensified our uh, case finding uh, last year, you can see the number of children have gone up from three percent of the previous year. Next slide. Yeah, this graph shows the uh, 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 gradual decrease of. Uh, um, Repros cases reported in, in the United Republic of Tanzania. Uh, but uh, you can see a bit of surge at uh, around 2017. Uh, this it means that when we have some effort introduced, then uh, the, the cases increases. And uh, it is this time when uh, we had the Aeropep in 2015. You see an uh, uh, increase in 2016. And then we started it, uh, observing uh, a decrease. But in 2017, also the three there were three endemic districts engaged in the BDSF project, and then there is a, that kind of slight increase. But we are learning from this kind of graph, of graph that uh, uh, whenever we put a bit of effort, uh, there is a lot of cases coming out. So. It, it's uh, quite true that we have uh, Eden sports still around. Next one. Yeah, this uh, uh, slide I uh, wanted to share with you that we are uh, gradually also increasing the proportion of MB cases and uh, getting 
very few of the of the of the PB, which probably uh, might predict of the of the old cases, and uh, this uh, could predict also that uh, maybe the 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 the, the the recent or current transmission is is going down. Next one. Yeah, the following is few slides. So, uh, the, the LP in Tanzania, but I have to admit that uh, the previous this presentation has has made a bigger part of. Uh, this one and uh, uh, probably has made my life very easy to, to present this slide. So in Tanzania, we participated like the other countries and we had the three sites. You can see those stars uh, in, the, in the map. It is uh, the three regions near the coast in the eastern part of the country. Next one. Yes, and uh, we what we did uh, in terms of the timing of the enrollment of the first index, it was both the previous cases, the existing cases, and those who, who were being newly diagnosed. So we we included those twelve months, the previous year, and uh, those who were diagnosed currently, but uh, the enrollment was done after as soon as the, the, the patients, the index starts the, the second dose of MDT. Next. Next slide, okay. Uh, this has been uh, very well, uh, uh, this uh, approach uh, or the methodology has been very well uh, explained by Dr. Krista uh, during our presentation. So I don't, uh, I don't think uh, if we, I can uh, go again, but what to complement, uh, it is uh, that uh, during this uh, uh, implementation uh, for Tanzania, we have to include the community health volunteers and uh, the health care workers. So we have to link the health facility, which is within the the, 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 the residence of the community health volunteers. Uh, so the, the, both of them were trained and uh, the community were taking the risk of patient from the S facility where they've been treated or where they are receiving MDT. And then they go now to the screening uh, in the household where the index belongs. So it was a kind of moving from one household where the index lives to the next uh, next uh, index household. That is the that's the door to door. And uh, from this, uh, we we those who were leprosy negative and uh, and, uh, and TB negative were given. Uh, and eligible for SDR, we are given SDR as they shown on the left side of this slide. Uh, otherwise, uh, I think most of the information we are given by in the previous presentation. Next. And uh, also this one was also included in the previous presentation of Dr. Krista, and she did uh, explain it very well. We, what I can uh, add here is that uh, uh, of our supplies, uh, of what we, uh, we expected, uh, it was, uh, uh, it was uh, highly accepted. And uh, uh, what we knew before, or what we believed before, that uh, the, the level of stigmatization and uh, probably maybe people would, would have run away but there was a lot of people from different households who were just asking to be involved. And even there were some people, neighbors, who were coming out and volunteering to just to, to say, look at my Russians, look at my Russians. 
and we 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 also uh, diagnose the a good number of the of, of, of new cases from from that that frontier. And uh, uh, the, in terms of refusal, uh, there was a very 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 few. I think only three. They just uh, they did not refuse completely, but we got a, a kind of challenges to to institute the 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 SDR to the to the family, kind of that. And the, there was no actually the report of the side effect all during the three years of the implementation. Uh, what was actually reported, it was a kind of miscommunication or the information was not given. For those common uh, mild side effects like change of color, uh, urine color, uh, kind of that. And uh, because of the information probably was not given, then the, 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 the participant, the study participant were exaggerating, but uh, we also, we, are, we give, the, in the in the information sheet, we we provided the uh, the number. Even my number was there. So some of them they just uh, telephoned to me and uh, we, we talk after talk. They just send even a message. Ah, now I feel very well. So it was a it was a it was a, a very great learn, learning also for us that uh, the community is even more than ready. Uh, different from what we, we thought before. Next. Yeah, these are also the, some of the indicators or some of the, the key items which we, we followed up. Uh, we, there were a proportion of index patients whose contact were screened. Uh, as you can see, a good number of them, number of index patients, number of contact listed, number of contact listed by index patient number of uh, contacts found, number of contacts screened, and number of contacts, uh, the average number of contacts. And these were all being uh, entered uh, into the, 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 the database, which was uh, being done uh, within the, the field. Next. Now let we have a bit talk on the scale up, uh, the scale up plan and uh, what has actually uh, happened. Uh, the National Operational Strategic Plan for TB and Leprosy, we have it, 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 in Tanzania, this is a combined program. So it is one, TB and Leprosy, they are working together and we share resources also. So the most common strategy of Leprosy case finding was passive and it still is a bigger part even at the present. Uh, so at the active case finding and the paper SDR is now included yeah, as a new policy for reproduce control in Tanzania. We have incorporated this in our new uh, guideline manual for TB and leprosy, uh, which is provided by the Minister of Earth. And, it, and the PEP is also now included in the new strategic plan 2021-2025. Uh, uh, our, our financial year starts July 1st, so we are now in the final touches of the new strategic plan. The previous one is ending 2020, so the, tw the 2021 is starting this July. It is also including SDR, PEP as one of the important and the key uh, intervention to eliminate leprosy. Next slide. Yeah, this is the process we, uh, the, where we started and uh, we are now in the 10 districts out of the 24 district endemic districts still around and uh, what we what you are seeing now is a, is a, is a, is a move from pilot to country implementation and uh, at this point we 
we, we, we were disseminating of what we learned from the AeroPEP. So we called the, the coordinators, the TB and Repros coordinators from the regions and the districts, oh, uh, these 10 districts, and we searched together. We went through the, the oral process and we, we brainstormed of what actually is required so that we can keep the, the, the PEP going in the LPEP sites, which was finishing, it was finished by 2018. And then in, uh, in the districts, uh, we, we had the three districts in the BDSF, which were doing the, 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 the contact screening, but they were not doing the SDR. There were no people there. And then we had the other three districts which we anticipated that they are going to start the other study on the paper for lab. So we, we all sat together and to just take advantage of the, of, the, of the available experience and of the plan which was within the, the, the PEP for lab so that we can expand the, 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 the opportunity of, of having these two studies uh, and, and take, uh, take from there to the, to, the, to, the, to the expansion. So what you are seeing here is the kind of steps which we went through. Uh, uh, first, we, we, we have to, to you, you see in Tanzania, we, the, the, the implementation of health interventions or the primary care belong to different ministry, does not belong to the Minister of Earth. So the Minister of Earth is uh, responsible of uh, producing uh, policy and uh, guidelines and also doing a uh, lot on the resource mobilization. But the President's Office, uh, Regional Administration and local government is the one which is doing all of the operational field activities. So we have to consult the, 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 in terms of the, of the governance, we have to consult the, 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 our sister ministry, and they have to prepare official data to inform these regions, to inform these districts, that the country has taken a step, has introduced the PEP, and now PEP is a policy for this country, and uh, you are required to participate and to implement. So that was the first step. During that, when we were inviting these people to come to for this kind of, of planning meeting. And this was done around the last year, uh, uh, World Lepros Day. And then we, we, after that, those coordinator went to the earth management team, which they, they now to give them feedback of what we have planned and how to go about it and how to integrate into their routine. Next. So the, the, as I've said, we have five regions and 10 districts. And uh, this, uh, uh, this, this expansion is being supported by the program, GRI, Bangkok Declaration Special Fund, the BDSF, and the PEP for F, which is supported by European Union. And now the, the, the initial uh, regions, this were LOPEP, and the scale up regions include the BDSF and the PEP for F. Next. And this are the distribution in, in the country where this. Uh, sites uh, are located. As we keep that those one on the, on the right side near the Indian Ocean shore and the other side near the Lake Victoria on the north. Next. So during that uh, training and the planning, we developed the training package, which is in Swahili, just a short one which is enough to be covered within a day and a half. And uh, 
we focused on the coordinator, S for city staff and the community health volunteer. So they have to be in the class for two days and one full day in the field. Doing exactly the, the, the visiting the, the leprous index cases, household and doing the screening. Next. So the, 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 the output when we, we, we last year, the output of the planning and training session, uh, we, we went through this, the, 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 the implementation framework, which included the, how to, to have the updated list of index cases, allocation, this it means by a, 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 a village, identifying hot spot, where does the bigger number of the already registered cases are coming from? Link the health facilities where the where 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 is the a nearby health facilities and is this health facility also offering the process service or not? Such kind of discussion and they having those kind of risks. It's staff and collaborator to be involved so they, they know their places and they can quite tell quite clear. And then in the tools, so we have to develop also the, 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 the tools uh, to, to, to just, in the, in the, here the precaution was to, to minimize the, the number of paperwork because the, the, you know in Tanzania we are currently operating at the almost 50% of the work of the earth workforce. So the, 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 the system or PHC system is, is overstretched already. So you cannot put a lot of, of papers or wrong kind of, uh, of, of reports. And then we, we designed the supervision and mentorship plan for each region, the checklist, what should we be looking for, the matrix, who is going to be involved, the where and when, and also how the reports they will be generated and the, for their own use. Next. Next. Yes, the other step which we have taken as the ministry, we have already in the patient card, we have already created a, a space and the, each patient who is coming to, who is diagnosed uh, is now required to, by police, to mention the name of is or our contact living in the household or whom he or she spent most of his or of his time with so they have to 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 to, to be listed here with all those information you can you can see and then thereafter because now like in those area in those four districts where we were doing LOP the because we don't have support at the moment so what we are using is to invite is to is is to give the invitation to the index for the household members or for the contact members so when they they come to the facility so that they can come to the facility and get screened so within the same card the you can see the the the, the fourth column from the from left the, whether they are the screen, the, the, those three uh, three columns eh, from from left from the fourth one, not screened, left positive or left ne negative. So when they, they have to come to the facility and get screened, and then he, the clinician will be, uh, give the remark whether this one has been wh what is going on, whether not no 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 not come to the to the facility or when it came and there's been given, let's say, SDR. So this is being used the countrywide, this form, for all patients. As our intention is to, to have this uh, uh, PEP all over the country. So we have already uh, incorporated uh, the requirement for the all index, all patients to mention their contacts by name, and uh, in the same uh, in the same patient file, 
is being kept there and the follow-up for the screening when they're invited to the facility has been recorded in the same same patient card. Next. So that is one of the, of the, of the tool. The other tool, this one is written in Swahili. It literally, it means the, the screening form for the, for the, for April's at the household level. And you can see this, the, 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 the second column after the numbers on the left is the names of those contacts who are also already in the previous card. And then the, the small uh, columns after the name, uh, the, the criteria and the, 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 the symptoms which they are found and including also the, 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 the BCG scar, whether it is seen or not. And then uh, the last three columns, they, they, they are indicating whether this one, because this is done by the community, when it is done by the community at the household, whether this one is a, is a, is a, is a what, is a, is suspected of leprosy or not, and is required to, to come to the facility for, for further uh, examination and kind of that. Next slide, I'm finishing up, Dr. Christine. And then this one is also the, 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 the this is the, the, the form for report by name, who, 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 who contacts have been reached. Next one. And this one is the summary form of, of the, of the S facility to report of the contact. So all, all these are already in the, in the districts. In those 10 districts which, where we are expanding. And the next one. Yeah, so these are a few challenges we are seeing uh, that uh, they can uh, slow or prevent us going ahead. Leprosy is completely depending on the donor funds. Uh, we, are, we are not receiving any fund uh, from the government. And uh, because it is already declared, uh, it's no longer a problem, a public health problem. So and, uh, even the GRI who is still around as a partner, it's a, it's a, it's a, the funding is decreasing. And even uh, when we receive from the others, it's just through the research. So the operational or routine is very much limited. I thank you very much. Thank you very much, Dr. Kamara, for this uh, very nice uh, presentation. And I think this is a very good example of how um, um, a, a pilot project, the LPEP project, has been translated now into a national policy. So you have been giving us a very good taste of this and what kind of uh, um, activities and, and preparations you have to make before you can kind of roll it out. Thank you very much. Uh, we are now going to the last presentation of uh, Dr. Sadi from Morocco. So uh, this is a, a country where they have been already uh, conducting uh, post-exposure prophylaxis for quite some time in the leprosy program. So please, Dr. Sadi, um, start your presentation. So uh, my presentation is about the achievements of the National Leprosy Control Okay. Uh, the achievements of the national national leprosy control program and the Moroccan experience with single dose rifampicin chemoprophylaxis. Next slide, please. So I will adapt uh, this plan after introduction. Uh, I will give you the epidemiological situation in uh, Morocco. Uh, present the National Leprosy Control Program and the single dose rifampicin chemoprophylaxis, what has been what has been done and the way forward. Next uh, slide please. 
So uh, leprosy is a rare disease that still presents many challenges. In fact, the reality of leprosy in Morocco is dual. One uh, on the one hand, the epidemiological reality is comforting and the decreasing trend is observed over years. On the other hand, the social reality of the disease made of poverty, precarity, discrimination, and especially of deficiency in access to care is usually a source of delayed diagnosis. Please, next slide. Here is a cartography of uh, Morocco. We still have, uh, so in Morocco we have 12 districts. Uh, in our country, uh, four northwestern dis districts uh, support more than 60% of new cases accumulated during the past decade. These, uh, these uh, four endemic regions are the uh, Tangier Tetouan Al Husayma with uh, 216 cases in uh, till 2019. Fes Meknes, 173 cases till uh, 2019. Rabat Saleh Kenitra, uh, 101 case till uh, 2019. And the districts of the Oriental, with 59 cases till uh, 2019. Next slide, please. Uh, here uh, we can note the uh, detection, uh, uh, the the detection. Uh, so till the uh, year 2019. In the year 2019, 15 new cases were notified. Uh, notified. The detection rate were, was uh, 0 0.04 per 100,000 inhabitants. Next slide, please. And uh, prevalence has declined significantly after the implementation of the multi-drug therapy uh, of the um, Ministry of Health treatment and the decentralization of healthcare in 2006. 34 patients were under treatment at the end of 2019. In 2019, prevalence rate was 0 0.04 per 100,000 inhabitants. Please, next one. Uh, here is the distribution of uh, leprosy cases by age and gender from the year 2000 to 2019 in Morocco. So regarding the distribution of leprosy cases by age and gender, 61% of cases registered from 2002 were male and 4,800 uh, were young people aged between 16 years to 39 years Lepsory, leprosy in children is not frequent in Morocco. It's uh, representing around 7% of cases. Next, please. Uh, here is the trend of grade 2 disability rates. It has fortunately decreased since the implementation of national leprosy program uh, in uh, 1981, and later, after the decentralized healthcare in uh, 2006, the audit of new grade two disability cases has started in 2011. Eight cases were notified in the last years. Uh, we can note that from 2002 to 2019, from 732 cases of leprosy, we had 431 cases, so a percentage of 58.8 did not have disability. 155 cases were grade one disability, 21%, and 79 cases 
uh, were grade two, uh, it means 11.9 percent. Next one, please. Here is the report of grade two disability audits of the eight cases detected. We can note that the most frequent causes of delayed diagnosis recorded and that constitutes the main challenges in the national strategy were competence of medical staff to diagnose leprosy in 38% of cases, followed by financial access, travel from mountainous area areas, stigmatization, ignorance of illness and self-medication, and geographical access, and also failure in context examination, because one of grade two disabilities was detected actively in a single dose rifampicin chemoprophylaxis operation. Next one, please. Now uh, we are going to report you the, pro the Moroccan experience of single dose uh, rifampicin uh, chemoprophylaxis. The goal uh, is to reduce transmission of leprosy and the main objective of this intervention that started in 2012 was to achieve at least 80% um, coverage among contacts of cumulative leprosy patients of the last 10 years with a single dose rifampicin chemoprophylaxis and also to address any barriers such as acceptability and feasibility by stakeholders before implementation in the national uh, leprosy control program. Next one, please. So from uh, 1980 to 1991, uh, we had the implementation of the national uh, leprosy uh, program. Uh, it was created by uh, in a department within the Ministry of Health in Morocco. Uh, we cre created the creation of nine then uh, after 11 regional units of leprosy control. Uh, the development of clinical and therapeutic researchers in National Leprosy Center. Uh, so for the period of national mass uh, surveys, uh, from uh, 18 national mass surveys, we, uh, we found uh, 373,575 persons examined. From, uh, from these persons examined, we could found 641 luxury cases. Next one, please. So, uh, as you can see in this slide, eight nati 18 national mass surveys were conducted. Uh, here is the number of per people uh, who were examined and uh, the luxury cases detected. Next one, please. From 1991 to 2006, uh, we centralized control in National Luxury Center. Uh, so uh, the main uh, the main goal, uh, the main uh, access was epidemiological surveillance. We have a central file in the National Lep Leprosy Center. Uh, the second axis was confirmation of the diagnosis and uh, the um, centralization of multidrug therapy with the three months hospitalization. Uh, the multidrug uh, therapy were followed by disulone monotherapy. Uh, during two years for postbacillar forms and four years for multibacillar forms. And we had three registers of surveillance. Uh, so uh, please next uh, slide. From uh, 2006 to 2012 also, we had, uh, con we conducted a review of the strategy and organization of the national leprosy control program, uh, decentralization of healthcare, and uh, we adopted the multi-drug therapy in the uh, Ministry of Health protocol 
with implementation of the new strategy, uh, including trainings and the guides. Next one, please. So, from uh, 2012, uh, since the introduction of single dose rifampicin chemoprophylaxis, uh, we started by the preparatory phase. Uh, we did a pilot study, the, so the, the phase uh, of the study uh, is uh, in four, uh, were in four endemic uh, regions. Uh, including uh, more than 3,000 contacts examined and 3,000 received uh, chemoprophylaxis uh, with the single dose of Revampicin. Uh, we are uh, looking uh, forward uh, Morocco without uh, leprosy in uh, 2030. Next one, please. So now we are going to report to you the Moroccan experience of single dose uh, rifampicin chemoprophylaxis. Um, next one, please. So this project has started in uh, 2012 by a preparatory phase of the pilot study. Several meetings and training sessions were conducted in the four endemic districts targeted in the pilot study. Data and listing of leprosy cases and contacts from 2002 were updated. The study pilot phase uh, were started in uh, 2013. Pilot sites were identified in the four districts and the investigations for contact examination and administration of rifampicin has started. Uh, the single dose rifampicin uh, chemoprophylaxis evalu evaluation was acceptable and also feasible despite from uh, some difficulties related to essentially leprosy cases lost to follow-up and contacts absent in investigation and ge geographical access uh, which was uh, in many cases difficult. Uh, next slide, please. So, thank you. National guidelines for leprosy control were then updated in uh, 2014 by the National Committee of Leprosy Control. A uh, single dose rifampicin, uh, prof, uh, uh, rifampicin chemoprophylaxis intervention was extended to all districts of Morocco with the same objective to examine and administer rifampicin to contacts of leprosy cases detected from, 20, uh, from 2002. Next, please. Uh, 13 uh, training sessions on consulting examination uh, and rifampicin administration were conducted and over 146 investigations were issued by local leprosy teams. Over 4,353 ex contacts were examined and over 4,030 have received rifampicin. Next slide, please. So regarding national recommendations of SDRC, uh, the SDRC is uh, in, indicated for context of, lepr of leprosy cases newly detected or registered in, uh, since uh, 2002. Uh, the targeted population uh, so the uh, SDRC is addressed uh, systematically to household contacts aged over five years and possibly for neighbor contacts. Uh, Rifampicin is administrated and supervised by a trainer and confidently and respect of Rifampicin counterindication. Uh, counseling for uh, leprosy cases and contacts is prior to examination and the rifampicin administration. Uh, just note that in Morocco, rifampicin is administrated in a single dose of uh, 600 milligrams. 
Next slide, please. So, uh, regarding uh, to the regarding the achievement of the project uh, of uh, since uh, to, uh, of uh, the retrospective contact surveillance since uh, two thousand and twelve to two thousand nineteen, uh, we'll start with this next one. Uh, the cumulative uh, leprosy cases. Next one, please. Uh, so, the thank you. So, the regarding cumulative leprosy cases, uh, as, a, as, as shown in this graph, 80% uh, uh, were examined with their contacts and 20% were lost to follow up. In the, nine, uh, in the year uh, 2019, we registered 15 new cases of, lep of leprosy, seven contacts were examined, and two contacts were absent. Okay, Christine, okay, thank you. So I will try to go, to go faster. Um, regarding to cumulative contacts, uh, examined, uh, we examined uh, 75 percent and 17 uh, percent were lost to follow up, 8 percent absent in investigations. Next one, please. 66 percent of contacts registered and examined are from Northeastern Endemic Districts, as said before. And next one, please, for uh, regarding administration of rifampicin, 91% uh, of contact examinated received a single dose, 8% uh, had counterindication of rifampicin, 1% refused, and 1% were uh, suspected of leprosy. So next one, please. From contact examinated, 37 were clinically suspected, of leprosy and only seven had confirmed diagnosis. Next one, please. So just here, uh, we uh, please note that uh, Dr. Ibtisam and the, the uh, team uh, had uh, published uh, in the, the year uh, 2017 an uh, original article in uh, the uh, review uh, plus uh, called the trend analysis of leprosy in uh, Morocco between 2000 and 2017, evidence on the single dose of rifampicin chemoprophylaxis. So you can just note the title of the article. You could uh, get time after to consult the, 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 the full text if you want. Uh, please, next one. Uh, so uh, here is a um, uh, we say here that just uh, for our country, we had uh, a review of the uh, program uh, in, the, in a session, in a workshop uh, between 14th and 21 October and in uh, last year. Uh, so, uh, uh, this, this, the stakeholder workshop uh, had the roadmap to uh, zero leprosy in Morocco. Next one, please. So here you can just have uh, a look to the roadmap uh, towards zero leprosy in Morocco between 2020 and 2030. So uh, here is our goals. And uh, thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Saidi. Um, and this was a very good presentation. I think you did very well because you have just been recently uh, placed also in this position. So uh, a very good job, I think, uh, that you've been presenting the experiences from uh, Morocco. Thank you. So I think we are now uh, at the moment coming to the uh, session of the questions uh, and I would like to ask people also whether they would like to ask any questions to one of the speakers. Um, so please let me know also whether you have any questions you can 
let me know that you want to ask the question. And I'll reiterate that to pose a question so Christine knows that you have a question, you can raise your hand. Christine? Yes, please. Uh, maybe if uh, uh, Teki is... Uh, uh, for Indonesia, for yeah. Teki, so can you uh, additional maybe for the, my presentation, please? Thank you. Yes, please. That's that's fine. I can also add that also to uh, to the presentation. So Dr. Teki would also be. I think she is also on the on the full uh, list of uh, contributors. Um, Are there any questions? Maybe Andy, could you could you explain once more? Maybe ah, ex I see a question from Doctor Abu Samit. Please let me also. Yeah. No. Uh, doctor, you can unmute yourself and pose your question. Dr. Abdul Samit, you can you can unmute yourself. Dr. Abdul Samit, could you, could you uh, unmute yourself and ask your question or otherwise write it in the chat? And are there other people who have any questions for one of the speakers? It seems to be very clear. Do you have any questions, Christine? No, well, I, well, I, I think uh, the, the presentations have been very clear also and, and have been also uh, mentioning a lot of the achievements and challenges. And these are, I think, also very, very interesting to, to hear for the, uh, for the different uh, participants. Maybe to um, uh, Dr. Saidi, um, what are the next steps for Morocco? How, um, how are you going to continue with the post-exposure prophylaxis? Dr. Sadi, could you please tell us also how Morocco is going to continue with the PEP? Yes, uh, now we have uh, validated the, the I, as I said in the uh, last slides, uh, we, uh, our country uh, pers uh, had the uh, uh, experts uh, so now we are still finalizing uh, the uh, this review with the uh, with the goals to have uh, perhaps a supplementary uh, budget to uh, face the uh, this uh, this uh, problem. Uh, 
uh, and the and the, we are more uh, uh, in, uh, more in, in, in more uh, purpose in uh, uh, the uh, investigation of uh, contacts and the sensibilization of uh, people to uh, to be uh, more attention to their uh, uh, to the signs of uh, cases or uh, uh, to be more um, uh, encouraged to uh, to have the uh, to take this uh, chemoprophylaxis if they are uh, contacts because uh, so in Morocco we are still having this prob problem of uh, of uh, stigmatization. So, uh, if uh, if uh, in some zones, uh, if uh, the cases are not very uh, frequent, uh, the contacts refuse still refuse uh, the uh, to to be uh, a part of the investigation or to get the chemoprophylaxis. So, uh, our main goals, as I said, is are to have a supplementary budget. And to to uh, be uh, to to be more uh, uh, complete in our uh, contact investigation and to uh, decrease the uh, the the um, stigmatization in uh, our community and uh, to. Uh, to uh, to cover uh, the uh, totality of uh, our cases and contacts uh, by the treatment and chemoprophylaxis. Okay, okay. Thank you very much. Well, that's that's uh, that's clear. Um, Dr. Abdul Samit, you are now able to ask your question. Hello. Yes, you hear me? Yes. You hear Okay, thank you. Uh, good afternoon again. Uh, thank you very much. It is very clear and very uh, well organized. Uh, just I want to ask general question. Uh, is it possible now to provide countries uh, which want to introduce uh, the beef oil uh, and be free of shark like the MDT? And is there is a tendency or or any of those approach of uh, contact tracing, I mean, is there is a direction of one will be maybe the best of, of those approach? Or how, you, how you see that? Thank you, Dr. Abdul Sami. So I, I understand that you have two questions. One question is, uh, is the, the, the refurbishing free of, of, of charge, just like yeah. the MDT? Yes. And is there a specific approach? Um, uh, maybe uh, Dr. Coleman which can, can be yes, which can be recommended here. I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. I understand. Yeah, Dr. Coleman, would you like to answer on the first uh, question? Yeah. Thank you for your question. Um, just like for when MDT was introduced in order to have it accepted by countries and rolling it out, the donation has been a key asset for this purpose. And we also see that though the guidelines of WHO for chemoprophylaxis have been issued already in 2018, pick up of or translating this guideline, this recommendation into action is not done, is, is done only in a few countries. So it's not well picked up. And one of the reasons could be the availability of the drug. So from the WHO side, we are negotiating with our donor if we could do a bulk procurement globally and make it available to countries in a similar way as we provide MDT. It's not exactly the cost. For many countries, if you do really your quantification, your needs and what it requires, it's not a big amount because rifampicin is not very expensive but it is the whole mechanism of procuring drugs and so and we don't need large quantities and even buying small quantities is a is a bottleneck in many countries because they need actually very small quantities so if we are successful to get it as part of a donation i'm sure that many more countries 
uh, will will jump on it uh, and and make it and adopt this uh, as a, as on a more routine basis. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Coleman, for this very clear uh, uh, contribution. Uh, the second question uh, Dr. Abdul Sami was was asking. Um, was concerning the the choice. Um, I would like to maybe give the floor to uh, Dr. Krista Kassan to respond to that. Yes, of course. Thank you, Dr. Abul, Abdul Samin. I think this is a question which is always occurring in each country when they think to take up the post-exposure prophylaxis. Which approach should we use? There is not a, a single answer like usual, it's not black and white. There are quite a lot of different parameters um, which you should follow. One is the epidemiology. So for example, if you have a lot of scattered cases, then we think that the contact approach is the better one. But if you have the cases very much clustered in small areas, sub-village areas, index cases, then of course blanket approach would be much better than the door-to-door -door blanket approach. The second point where you need to make decision is the level of stigma in your country. So when you don't see a high level of stigmatization, then of course contact approach or even social approach is um, very much reliable. But when you see a high number of stigmatization and, and big issues with um, disclosure, then the blanket approach or even a skin camp approach would be favor favorable. So you see this is like uh, like a decision tree which you need and another point of decision is the funds you have available because if you don't have any additional funds like the Tanzanian colleagues were telling us today in the former LPEP district they have no additional funds for active case finding they use now their the health center approach I told you that the health center approach is the cheapest one. You only need to write down the contacts and ask them to come, but it's also the most ineffective one. So make the long story short, we are working in the moment also on a matrix, but it's not available yet. So maybe you need to go through these points, epidemiology, stigmatization, and available funds and identify the best approach then for your country. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Kassan, uh, for this, uh, this very clear explanation. Uh, I can see in the Zoom group chat that Dr. Sana Salim has also asked several questions and some of them kind of are answered already by your response, Dr. Kassan. But I can see also uh, um, yeah, Dr. Sana Salim is from the Maldives. She has uh, a question also she likes to ask. Um, yeah, Dr. Sana, could you please ask this question uh, to the broader group? Yeah. Are you getting my ways? Yes. Thank you. <laughs> Uh, thank you for the excellent presentations. It was really useful. Uh, we recently started off with uh, zero leprosy in Maldives, and uh, what we ended up uh, finding was uh, the stigma is still really high, although in low endemic settings. So I didn't find uh, many comments regarding uh, stigma and discrimination while you were doing these studies. And I wanted to know if any of you would like to share your experience mainly dealing with stigma and discrimination, especially in low uh, endemic settings. And also if you had approached uh, any migrant worker communities or if any additional advisors, if we had to approach a migrant working group in terms of a screening or in terms of going for a PEP approach. Very good question, thank you. 
Thank you. Uh, <laughs> very good. Yeah, and, and well, maybe I may also uh, mention here already that this uh, webinar is one of a series of webinars. And there is a plan also to have a, a special webinar also on stigma and mm -hmm. uh, discrimination and um, disclosure uh, in PEP. Um, and that will be organized in the coming months somewhere. So mm -hmm. uh, that's maybe also an interesting uh, webinar to, uh, to, to join. Mm -hmm. um, but I would like to ask Dr. Waburuntu if you could maybe also say something about uh, one of these questions yeah. which were asked also, uh, inclusion of migrant workers, um, but also what kind of approach to use in um, an island setting of uh, 1,000 to 5,000 population. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Mrs. Anna. Uh, maybe I, I will, uh, I would like to answer your question. Uh, we recommended for your, uh, in, one, in one for island setting for size about 1,000 to or uh, 5,000 in the maybe blanket approach. But meanwhile, is a blanket approach in this case, live in cluster. If only specific for small area, uh, such a uh, village to village, usually the area has a difficult area. And then uh, two, the best way in Indonesia, uh, do overcome the challenge is always involve stakeholder in the village and also community uh, participation. And the three, I think is uh, we have to uh, refer to local regu regulation in its uh, maybe in its country. So maybe it's uh, my opinion. Thank you, Ibu, Christine. Thank you very much, Dr. Rebaburuntu. Uh, I hope this has been uh, helping you a little bit, uh, Dr. Sana. Um, and I am wondering whether there are still people who have burning questions because I'm mindful of the time. It's almost uh, two hours that we have been talking. Um, so is there anybody who wants to ask a last question? Yeah, uh, can I ask a question? Yes, but please, uh, Dr. Coleman. Specifically for uh, for um, uh, the program manager of Morocco, uh, actually two questions. Of your new cases that you currently detect, and because you have been implementing SDR for quite a number of years already, how many of them have got rifampicin? So where did it fail? Because we know that it is certainly not 100% efficacy. Uh, it's much less so. Uh, among your new cases, some of them have got SDR in the past. And a second question is, uh, your new cases, are they all autochthonous cases or do they also include migrants from other countries who were never eligible for SDR because they were not remaining, they were not in the country before? Thank you. Yes, Dr. Sadi, or maybe also Dr. Ipsisam. Yes, can I, can I answer? Yes, please. Uh, for just, uh, uh, thank you for your question. And uh, just, uh, I uh, wanted to add uh, two points in the, my intervention of, uh, in a few minutes uh, later um, ago. So uh, I just wanted to say that we are looking forward to having a best model of mapping of our cases uh, among different regions. So we have uh, better uh, projects of mapping uh, in Morocco. And uh, this uh, mapping will help us to, uh, to extend the, uh, the approach of uh, contact investigation and uh, the, uh, the uh, uh, blanket approach as a, a perfect model or uh, a little bit less. Uh, less perfect one. So uh, first of all, the mapping will uh, will be very uh, useful to the uh, 
to the uh, extension of uh, investigation of contacts and uh, to uh, to uh, increase the uh, the uh, uh, this pathology in uh, to 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 to, uh, to have more detection of uh, cases in our uh, country. Uh, for your question, so as I said in my presentation, uh, since like the um, I don't know the number, but 23, I think. So uh, we uh, we have uh, from uh, since 2002 to 2019, uh, we accumulated uh, 4,831 contacts were registered. We examined 75 uh, percent from them. Uh, 17 uh, percent were lost to follow up and uh, 8 percent were absent in investigations. So uh, from the 75 percent uh, contacts examinated uh, from the 4,000 people, uh, we uh, noted, not, noticed 66 percent from the endemic districts. And your question uh, was about uh, the administration of rifampicin. So uh, the coverage was 91% uh, uh, of contacts examinated have received the single dose of rifampicin. And 8% only had uh, contraindications. Uh, and one person refused uh, to uh, to receive the treatment. Uh, for sorry, sorry, my question was actually the opposite. Every year you report about twenty new cases. How many of them have got SDR in the past? That would have been the question. In the past, before uh, having the uh, the. Uh, can I, can I complete the answer, please? Yes, please. Yeah, thank you, Christine. So uh, good morning, everyone, and thanks for all the speakers for the very clear presentation. If I can just add some, some uh, elements to the answer of Dr. Sadi. Um, yeah, uh, for sure. So Morocco is very low uh, endemic country, so we register uh, uh, around 20 new cases per year. But uh, when we started the project with the with the PEP in Morocco, we we aim to cover um, uh, uh, the, the the household contacts of all the cases registers uh, registered from 2002. So we have covered all the contacts of all the new cases, and not only the. So it was a retrospective uh, uh, coverage of contacts from uh, ten years ago, from starting with uh, in uh, 2012. So we have. Uh, accumulated all the, the cases registered uh, 10 years ago and their contacts and we, we, uh, we, uh, we covered them with, uh, with rifampicin, if that uh, answered the question. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Tisham. Dr. Koerman, are you uh, satisfied with your uh, answer? Yes, yes, go ahead, please. <laughs> okay. Well, I think we have come to uh, an ending of this, uh, this webinar and I hope you uh, really have enjoyed this, uh, this first webinar. I really like to thank all the speakers, but also all the participants who have listened two hours and have come up with very good questions. Um, so what I mentioned before, what I just like to, uh, uh, to mention again is that this is just one of the first uh, webinars which we're going to um, to have. So we are planning also a webinar on stigma and disclosure, and there's going to be one or two more uh, webinars. Uh, but this first uh, webinar has been given us already quite a lot of um, good ideas and, and information from the questions. So I would like to uh, to close this this webinar, uh, Doctor. Before we really rounding up. Thank you, Christine. Uh, dear colleagues, I'm uh, quite satisfied after this first 
webinar. I hope that this will really give some impetus of translating the recommendation of chemoprophylaxis into policy and into action in the field. After the introduction of the, of the history of, of leprosy and chemoprophylaxis, we, Krista has also explained the methodology, how it can be done in various settings and what are the different approaches. And we have got um, very valuable field experiences from countries. Uh, Indonesia um, showed us the impact it can have on a small island to really bring leprosy from a high incidence to, to almost zero. And it is important that there is uh, a strong commitment. She also mentioned about the importance of health education, of good recording and reporting system of avail availability of drugs, etc. Tanzania program manager uh, also uh, shared his experience of of uh, the um, of of chemoprophylaxis and how it could be scaled up. And what was important there is that it is already included in their national strategic plan so that we can go beyond pilots and beyond research, but then make it as a policy. Uh, of course, he, he highlighted the problem the country faced with not having sufficient funding. And I will come back later on it, what, what is the key message with regard to funding. And Morocco is a peculiar case in the sense that here we are really in the end game of leprosy. The numbers are, are very few. Um, what I have seen is that um, in spite of few numbers with lots of ups and downs, it becomes even more difficult to interpret data, but particularly your publication in PLOS show that after you started SDR, you got still a, 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 a nick in the, in the curve, you to abandon the curve to bring it further down. That should definitely motivate us that this is a good way. Now, in summary, what can we say about, about, uh, about chemoprophylaxis or about SDR? Um, first of all, it's, it's not a perfect tool. Uh, the efficacy was demonstrated to be between 50 and 60 percent, which is, we could say, is modest. But let's, um, other programs have also intervention or tools with an efficacy of 50 or 60 percent, and they are extremely enthusiastic about it. So this is certainly not bad. If tomorrow we have a vaccine for COVID that gives us 60 percent protection, I'm sure it will be extremely happy the whole world to say, yes, this is a very good vaccine. So 60 or 50 or 60 percent efficacy to prevent leprosy as a dreadful disease in such a simple way, just one tablet. I think it, it's, it's, it's something that needs to be promoted. Because the efficacy is only modest, it should be compensated with highest possible coverage. So if we have modest efficacy, but we have an almost near 100% coverage, we can have a meaningful impact at population level, at country level. If we have 100% efficacy, efficacy tool, but the coverage is only 20%, it will lead us nowhere with regard to have impact at population level. It will only protect a few individuals on individual level. So that's why, because the intervention is only uh, of, of a modest efficacy, we need to compensate it with the the highest possible coverage. To drug management, we, have, we will later have another uh, uh, webinar dedicated to it. Um, it's important to, to, uh, to have proper drug management. We did not talk much about side effects, probably because it is negligible because of only single dose. It was not reported in most programs, but we should give it attention. The main reason is because we are giving it to healthy people. We are not giving it to patients. And because we give it to healthy people, any major, um, uh, major side effects should, should, should be accounted for and should be properly managed if it happens. And then with regard to, to funding, I think the, the case we should make collectively as leprosy community is that this prevents leprosy. And if we, it's a relatively small investment, but if we can prevent cases, it will have a much major return in prevented in averted disease, in averted disabilities, et cetera, not even to talk about the social consequences, et cetera, it has. So that is a case I think we should, we should make collectively as NGOs, as WHO, as other partners to convince our decision makers to invest in this tool. So with this, I would like to, to end here. Over to Christine. Thank you.
thank you very much, uh, Dr. Coleman, for this uh, very good uh, capturing of the whole webinar and also some very uh, useful remarks at the end um, on how we should proceed. Um, yes, I think I have really enjoyed this, this webinar and we will soon get back to you also for the other uh, webinars and inform you uh, timely. Uh, the idea is also that different countries and different partners will also be part of that. So it's not only uh, three countries which we're going to present, but we will also uh, try to involve a lot of other uh, programs. So uh, please uh, keep um, uh, looking at, at our um, website the, of the Global, uh, Global Partnership Zero Leprosy Org and, and try to um, be aligned also what is organized in the coming months. Uh, so you will find also this webinar uh, which you can also access there. Uh, if you want we can also send you some of the slides so, so just let us know um, and send us a mail. So thank you very much for, uh, for today and uh, I wish you a very nice uh, continuation of today. Thank you very much.